Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Trade Thursday's March Market Mastermind. Everybody, thanks for uh, bearing with us here on our little uh, little halt as we ran to the finish line to start this sucker up. Uh, can everybody see my PowerPoint okay? Can everybody hear me okay? It is amazing I'm here. I'm not even going to tell you about this little techie situation I've been in all day today. But my team knows all about it, and I'm pretty sure that I drove them to drink today. And it might have been Kentucky bourbon, and it might have been vodka. I don't even know what's going on in their world right now, except for I'm here. Okay, so where y'all dialed in from? Got a got a new speaker on the mic for y'all tonight. I'm kind of excited to hear him go. Meditation and some cherry coke. New Zealand, what up? OC. I'm from LA. We say it LA, and it's not in California. We are from Lower Alabama. Well, I am Hubertson, Kentucky. And they don't call it Versailles. They call it Versailles. And they mean it. Arkansas. All right. All right. Well, we are Trade Thirsty. If you don't know that, me and my business partner in crime, Hubert Centers, that you've been hearing me chit-chat with, started this company a couple years back to do these special sessions with you guys once a month where we bring in some rock stars to teach you what they're doing that works in the market right now, not last year, not Maybe, maybe later in 2045, but right now, right now, what's hot, what's working? Um, I had to twist Hubert's arm because he has not been on here in a long time to come and be one of my speakers tonight. And he graciously uh, took the twist and said yes. So he is going to be up on deck first. Um, and I've got a gentleman here for Small Trader Management, my new buddy Nick. I'm kind of excited he's going to be on here uh, for you guys tonight so you can listen to what He's got to say about a trade management firm he's been with and how he got there and tell you a little bit about his journey. And then we'll round the night out with Serge Berger, who has been one of our guest speakers in the past. He talks about candles and uh, has a very uh, large following over on the options side of things. He's a, a candle guru, candlestick guru. So, uh, of course, you know, if you uh, if you don't know a bunch about candles, you uh, you should because they can help you with pattern recognition. So that's uh, that's my three guys, and we're going to kick this thing off because we're running a couple minutes behind. We um, are way over, I'm going to call storage, because that's the problem I've been having with my machines today is storage. Uh, we are way over capacity for registrations tonight. So I would recommend, um, a little housekeeping here, I would recommend if you're here and you have a seat, that you keep your seat and don't log out, because if you log out and try to come back in and we're at capacity, there's nothing I can do for you. Um, and I got no magic wand to fix that. Um, and we are recording this evening. We record all of these events. Um, and we will send you out a copy of the recording. But we have had technology snafus in the past. And with all the technology from four different states recording right now, sometimes it happens. Um, we do our best to back it up. Sometimes it happens. And so I'd recommend if you set aside your night to spend it with us, it's three hours. I set a timer on these guys, and that's all they get. Um, Y'all be patient with them, let them get through their material and ask your questions, and we'll uh, we'll get this party started right now. I'm going to pass the mic to my good friend. I'm going to call him like, like a second brother to me, Hubert Sinners. And there's the ball, Hubert. You should have it now. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. All right, so I'm going to get started here. So you should see a big black uh, slide with a big blue eye. Does everybody see that? I'm going to teach you how to find some really good trades on the market. It's been a little squirrely lately, but not bad if you kind of know the right places to look at. My objective for this presentation is to give you some value as you're here, right? So I will give you the opportunity to buy a course to continue your education if you want to, but I'm going to give you value first, all right? So first slide says welcome. I got to make sure that my little righty tool thingy works here. So let me see if this is working first. Pin, what is the answer to this question? And if you can see that, that'll let me know that my little tool thing is working. 2042. Uh oh, that's not good. Uh, 2020. All right, cool. So that's working. All right, so let's get to it. So, first and foremost, the warning disclaimer. Warning, danger will, Rob real, blah, blah, blah. danger will Robinson. You are probably going to lose a lot of money trying to figure out how to do this thing we call trading. Now, I'm going to be talking about trading. They call it trading for a reason. We don't call it guaranteed wealth generation with zero risk. There is risk in what we do in here. Right? 
it. The same reason that fishermen don't call it catching, they call it fishing. And the same reason that hunters don't call it killing, it's calling it hunting. You may go fishing, not catch anything. You may go hunting, not kill anything. Um, so it is very important that you only risk discretionary income, only money that you can afford to lose and do without because you're probably going to lose it and then some. I am registered. I am a registered Series 3 and a Series 30. All that means is I took a couple of tests and got 70% or higher on them. The reason I am registered is because I don't like to pay retail fees. So I took a couple of tests, opened up my own brokerage firm, and then I also lease or own seats on the exchanges that I trade on. I am considered a professional trader and I pay the professional fees, but I'm also uh, regulated by the CFTC and the NFA. So well, you will never hear me say guaranteed. I will almost always say probability, probably, you know, hypothetically, you know, stuff like that. I will show you what I really do, but in some of these cases, I'm going to be showing you hypothetical simulated performance, and then we'll talk about how trading really works. All right. So uh, I like to take the disclaimer up a notch or two. So I go, your trading career will probably end like a bag bad, bad, bad country song in reverse. Your wife's going to leave you probably for your best friend. Your kids are going to grow up hating you. Your dog is going to die because there are no cats in country songs. Your Ford or Chevy pickup truck will be repossessed. And your single wide or double wide trailer will be foreclosed on. If you understand the disclaimer that I just read to you, give me a yes. So if the CFTC or NFA audits this, which they have the ability to do since I'm registered, they'll say, well, he did a pretty good job. He tried to scare him away from trading. All right, cool. So my name is Schubert Centers. I'm known in the trading and investing niche as the guy with the no BS approach to trading and investing. I don't think it's all because I'm such a straight shooter. I'm just like anybody else. I, I have faults and and, and this is just like the next guy. Uh, but I think it's just because I'm not that smart. I'm not the sharpest axe in the shed and I'm not the sharpest knife in the in, in the drawer. So I try to think make things super, super simple because I'm dyslexic. So the way I learn is visual in nature. So let's get to it. So I will try to reinforce with you. I don't show you any of this collage of slides or any of this next story. I tell you, it is not to impress you. It is to impress upon you. If a fat redneck from Kentucky can do this, uh, do this stuff for a living, I think you got a shot too. Now, depending on where you're at and where you start at, it depends on what research you look at and what numbers you believe. I've seen as few of us as 5% make it. I've seen as high as 20% of us make it. It really depends on somebody and what their data that they're looking at as far as successful traders. I don't just trade for a living. There's three main different ways that I make money. When I was 17, I decided to leave the house and I started here, S-T-A-R-T. And my journey was here. I wanted to make as much money as I could because I was success driven. I was like, oh, I don't want to be a millionaire, a multimillionaire. Billionaire is a little hard to do, but I was like, oh, I don't want to be a millionaire. I've never seen anybody go from point A to point B and unless they're an overnight success. An overnight success in my eyes is somebody that puts anywhere to seven to 10 years of good old fashioned blood, sweat, and tears. If you want to make a lot of money, you are physically going to have to work your ass off in order to do so. I've also never seen anybody do it in a stair-step fashion that lives like this, or you just gradually over time get better at it. Uh, although I read about that in books sometimes, I've just never seen it happen. Most of the people that I hang out in our masterminds, uh, that me and Jeanette hang out with are either millionaires, multimillionaires, got a couple billionaires. Most of them either had a little bit of early success, very few of them, but most of them had a lot of failures along the way. And then they just went on their own little wild little journey of trying to figure out how to get to point B. All right. So some of the things are going to be kind of weird and counterintuitive when you first learn how to do those. Now, like I said, when I was growing up, I didn't have a lot of good role models in my life, and I had a couple of different things I could have done. I could have been either a coal miner, and I didn't like that because I didn't want to die black lung. I saw some people die black lung. That kind of freaked me out. Could have been a factory worker, and I was like, yeah, that's boring. That's going to drive me crazy. Could have been a weed grower or dealer. I was like, the risk or reward there, didn't like. Could have been a meth dealer or cooker. Also didn't like the risk reward or could have been a moonshiner. And I was like, you know what? All the risk rewards on these right here kind of suck. I don't want to end up in a jail cell with Bubba in an orange jumpsuit trying to fight over who gets the top bunk and who gets the bottom bunk. So I decided to get out of there and go on my own journey. Now, how I make money is I make it these main three different ways. And uh, the three ways are I make it trading and investing. 
I make it in businesses and I also invest in other businesses or I do it with real estate. And it depends on the day, the month, the year, the week, depending on what about becoming a vet. Yeah, I, I, I tried the vet route, decided I didn't want to continue sticking my arm up cow's rear ends and decided that was not for me and they don't make enough money for the amount of time that they put into the work. So these are the three ways that I do it. Now, in these pictures that I've written all over, you can see this is a picture of Paula Abdul, super nice lady. She's actually really tiny. Uh, she probably weighs about 80 pounds soaking wet. And she's six inches shorter than that because she's got six-inch heels in that photo that we're posing for. And then this guy back here, this is Sir Richard Branson that you can't see because I've covered his lovely face up with all of uh, the ink. Uh, I got more chins than he does in that photo, most definitely. Both Richard and I suffer from dyslexia. We had a conversation about that. This is Mr. Wonderful. He's kind of evil. You want to stay away from him. He'll try to do a license deal in your business and gut it if he can. And then you either love this guy or you hate this guy. That's um, that right there is. Anybody know who that is? Anybody know? So see him, see how many people love him. See how many people hate him. Yeah, Dave Ramsey. And then that, I'm this guy. I don't have that garb on today. I think that was for a, a photo shoot for a magazine. I got a T-shirt on, a pair of jeans, a pair of tennis shoes, and an Alabama hat from Jeanette. All right. I am in front of these LCD screens. I've got six of them in front of here, and I know there's going to be some kind of groundbreaking study that comes out and go, okay, if you're surrounded by more than 12 LCDs, it's going to either cause brain cancer or testicular cancer. I know there's going to be a study, and I'm going to be terrified when it comes out because I'm surrounded in this office by those things. I am in front of this microphone. In this office, we affect at the back cave because when I was a kid growing up, I was like, quote unquote, if I ever make enough money to build the big house on the hill, I, I watched a lot of Ghost of Mr. Chicken, Scooby Doo, and Batman when I was a kid. And I was like, man, I really love these little bookcase doors that Batman and Scooby Doo goes in and Ghost of Mr. Chicken, where they go into like these little secret hideaways. So uh, my commute every morning is I go downstairs in the second level of my house and I pull this book and I hit that button and it opens up into a little 1500 square foot office that me and my team do business with uh, in every day. That's kind of how we do things. Now, I know it's childish and immature, but that's kind of like the stuff that I'm into. So we've got that out of the way. So congratulations. Uh, you know a little bit about me. I want to find out a little bit about you. What do you trade right now? What do you trade the most of? Stocks, options, futures, forex? Stocks, options, futures, or Forex. All right, Forex, Forex, equities, Forex and options, Forex and futures, 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 none. Really, that's interesting. Uh, Forex, Forex, oh, a little bit more Forex than anything tonight. All right, Forex, options, oh, there we go. Futures, all right, all over the board. Do you spend more time day trading, swing trading, or investing? Day trading, swing trading, or investing? Swing, swing, day. All right, so that's a little mix. More swing than day. All right, cool. All right, so congratulations. You're in the right place at the right time, and here's why. I'm going to show you how I think is a great way for you to take your trading to the next level. If you're into candlestick analysis, which I think you should be, candlestick analysis is a great way to pick up on patterns that the markets has given you. You're going to have a new opportunity to take your trading education to the next level and then potentially your trading to the next level. So let's talk about a little bit about what this works on. What does this work on? It works on stocks, options, futures, forex, bonds, gold, commodities. It works on all those things. It works on some of those better than others. So let's go through some of that stuff. All right. So if we take a look at this now, this webinar will be a little bit different. Okay. Uh, I am not your average uh, webinar giver, right? Although I do put a lot of webinars on, I like to have fun and cut up and, and mess around. Uh, life is too short, and I don't think any of us get out alive, so we might as well have fun while we're here. These are the back-testing results of this strategy slash tactic methodology that I'm going to share with you today. On the S&P 500, the results over the last five years, stocks in the index out of 430 out of 500 stocks, so out of 500 stocks, 430 of them, would have, uh, it was 86%. So in other words, it worked on, out of 500 stocks, it worked on 430 of those. So it had an 86% success rate on working on those 500 things. All right. If you took every signal, in other words, if you took the long and then the short and then the long and then the long and then the short and then the long, you would have got a return of 33%, which is not bad. Okay. Uh, if, if you would have uh, deleted the counter trend signals and only went with the 
trending signals, you would have increased your performance from 33 to 79%. And using this three day or three bar confirmation, because we're going to be looking at day charts here, uh, daily charts, you would have increased your return from 33% to 79%. So all I'm saying here is if you've got a valid uptrend, I don't want you to short this. I want you to buy the pullbacks, buy the pullbacks, buy the pullbacks, and buy the breakouts. I don't want you to play the real minor short-term time frames. It's kind of crazy to do so, and it's not really productive for you to do it. All right, it works on most of the stocks in the S&P 500, only have 430. Now, it's been profitable on 29 currencies over the last 10 years, all right? It's been profitable on 29 currencies over the last 10 years. That's pretty good. And how you want to do that is you want to use a multi-time frame analysis with a daily, a 60-minute, and a 10-minute time frame. And we'll go walk through some of that in a minute. So first things first, time frame selection. So the, the preferred time frame that I like is a daily chart, then an hourly chart, and then a 10-minute. And I would pick two. I would either pick the daily and the hourly and then the 10-minute, whichever one you feel most confident in your skill level and the time in which you're going to hold these trades. All right. So if I'm looking at a daily chart frame, a daily time frame, my time horizon is going to be weeks and it's going to extend to the right 20 to 30 bars. If I'm looking at an hourly time frame, it's going to extend my time horizon for the trade is going to be days of time. Now that could be three days. That could be 21 days, but I know that it's going to extend minimum to the right three bars, three days. If I'm looking at a 10-minute chart, then I know I'm going to be in it for at least four hours because it extends to the four-hour mark there, and I'm going to be in it hours of times. Now, a lot of people ask me on the option side, well, if I'm trading weekly options, which one would I want to trade? Well, if you're trading weekly options, look at an hourly chart. If you're going to do uh, monthly options, look at the daily time frame, okay? And then if you're just scalping, I would look at a 10-minute intraday time frame. All right, this is what you want. It's the number one technique used in Japan. There's this book that seven years in a row, they've had this number one best-selling book, and the, the tactic that it's been about has been about Ichimoku clouds. And you're going to know exactly what's happening in seconds. Ichimoku stands for, at a glance, when you initially look at it, it looks kind of confusing, but we're going to break it down in its components. It's really good for trends and signals, and it's designed to produce very clear signals, all right? Very clear signals. So let's get to it and learn about what this is. So the edge for you now, now there's not very many indicators out there, methodologies, strategies, and tactics that will help you in all three of these. We just call it the ghost of the ghost of Christmas past, right? Because there's past, present, and future. There's not a whole lot of indicators that will give you all three where it gives you the past, what it's doing now, and what it's probably going to do in the future. There are a few, but they're few and far between. Do you see a big black screen with it looks like a blue ribbon and some candlesticks on it? Do you see that right now on your on your screen? All right, cool. So this is the Ichimoku cloud. So let's talk about some of the major theories on how to use this correctly. If the price action is above this thing called the cloud, that little blue ribbon, if it's if the price action is above, then we want to try our best to stay bullish on the market. If the price action is below the cloud for at least three bars, you want to try to stay bearish in nature. All right? This is just real-time support and resistance, as you can see. It's going to bounce off here, bounce off here, should bounce off here. This one actually went through, and then it bounced. So this one right here is not a great signal. They end up working. Good signal, good signal, good signal, good signal. This is telling us like the cloud, if, it was to, if the price action was to sell off, it'll probably float down here and bounce off either here or here. Does that first concept make sense? Valid uptrend or downtrend? I don't really care what the color of the cloud is per se, but if I'm above the cloud, I'm bullish and I want to focus on longs. If I'm below the cloud, I want to focus on shorting stuff. All right, cool. This first thing is called the cloud, C-L-O-U-D, the cloud. All right, the cloud, C-L-O-U-D. All right, so here we've got the cloud, C-L-O-U-D. This first yellow line is called the turning line, T-U-R-N. So everybody type in your in your chat box, cloud, type in cloud one time, C-L-O-U-D, and then type in turn or turning line. So you got the cloud and then you got the turning line. This is a nine period midpoint average is what it is. All right. Uh, cloud is trending up. Yes, cloud is trending up. 
All right. So we've got the cloud. We've got the turning line. And you can think about the turning line because it's really close to the price section of the market right now. It's going to be our right now support area. If we break that support area, well, the next place we'll go to is called the STD, the standard line. No, it's not something that you got in high school or college for messing around. I don't know. Maybe it is. I don't know you. So here we got again, cloud, C-L-O-U-D. Here we have the turning line, T-U-R-N. Now everybody type in STD. This is going to be a funny experiment. Everybody just type in standard, STD for standard line for short. So that's the that's the three components. We've got one more component, but before we move to that, notice that if it breaks the yellow, where does it go to after the yellow? Probably goes to the purple. If it breaks the yellow, and then if it breaks the purple, where does it go to? Yep, to the blue. So if we break here, if we break one, we go to two. If we break two, we go to either three or four. That's our real-time support and resistance area that's going to tell us what's going on. Last part of this equation is we have cloud, C-L-O-U-D. We have the turning line, T-U-R-N. We have the standard line, the STD. And then we have the lagging line. Everybody type in lag, L-A-G. This one is slow. That's why it's called the lagging line or the confirmation line. So we've got cloud, turning line, standard line, and lagging line. Those are the only four components that you really need to look at. Now, here's why this is so powerful, and this is why I love this so much. A lot of people ask me, like, why do you talk about this stuff so much? This enables me to take 25 plus years of technical analysis and teach you how to use this thing in an hour, hour and a half, and you can read a chart really, really effectively. Are you going to be able to smoke everybody in the trading world? Uh, no, probably not. But what it does is it takes 25 years of experience and implants, implants it in your lap and goes, look, this is how you read a chart correctly. All right. So this is why it's so powerful. This is the past, P-A-S-T, this one right here. This is what's happening right now, also known as the present. And this is what's going to happen in the future. All right. So past, present, and future. If we break this yellow, we're going to go to the purple. If the purple, and it should bounce off that purple, but if it doesn't, all right, but if it doesn't, the past is actually the present shifted to the left. That's exactly what that is, Bob. Yep. That's what that is. It's the present shifted back. If it doesn't hold it to purple, well, then it's going to go to the top of the blue or the bottom of the blue. Now, heads up, if that doesn't happen, and then if we spend one, two, or three days below this cloud, well, then we're now in short mode, and it continues to go massively lower. All right. Let's talk about all these components. The turning line. The turning line is the midpoint calculation where you're going to take the high and the low of the last nine days, and you're going to divide that by two. A lot of people will miss correctly inform you that it's a nine period moving average. It is not. Here's how this thing is calculated. Now, I got D's in both algebra in high school and college, like D as in dog, not B as in boy. So if I can handle this stuff, you can handle it too. So here's today. We count back nine bars. We find the low of that range. We find the high of that range. The high of that nine-day range was 465.75. The low of that range was this candlestick, and it was 434.39. What you're going to do is you're going to take these two numbers. You're going to add them together, and it's going to come up to 90014. And no, I'm not a math whiz. The answer is right here. The math is already done for us. It's going to be 900.14 divided by 2. It's going to give us 450.07, okay? 450.07. This number will be planted on your, you're going 450.07. Now, remember what we said if we're coming below the cloud, we're bearish? Notice that we went below the cloud, we went into the cloud, and then we rolled back over. If we break this red line at 450.07, which it looks like we're going to do here, where's the next place it's probably going to go? Yep bottom of the cloud right here. Now, that would be number one. If it breaks the bottom of the cloud, where's the next place it's going to go? Yep, you guessed it. Back to the standard line. And that number right here is going to be 425.42. Does that make sense? Let's see how the standard line is, is calculated. The midpoint of the high and the low of the last 26 sessions. All right. You're going to take the high and the low of the last 26 bars. Then you're going to divide that by two. That number will be your midpoint. So here's how we work that calculation. Now, remember, the, the price line, the, the line that's closest to the price line is always called the turning line. The one that's second close 
The second one is the standard line. That's the one we're calculating right now. So here's how this one works. This little green line is the standard line, the STD. Now notice the charting platform already does this math for us, but some people like to know how it's calculated, so I teach it. So here we have today, we're going to count back 26 bars, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, tick. Here is the low, and there is the high. The high was 465.75. The low was 385.10. You're going to add those two together and get 850.85. Divide that by two. That's going to give you 425.42. That number will be on your chart. Once again, if we break this red line, we're going to go to the bottom of the cloud. If we break the bottom of the cloud, we're going to go to that green line. It's going to act like a little magnet like this right here. It's going to attract the price action to come down here. It's going to be like, hey, come down here. This is where you need to be because that's the real-time support and resistance area. Cloud span A is the midpoint of the turning line and the standard line shifted 26 bars forward. So here's how this works. You take the, what is the red line? Anybody remember? What's the one closest to the price action? Is it the turning line or the standard line? Which one? Aha, turning line. Take the turning line at point A and then take the, standard line at point B, draw a midpoint between the two and force it into the future 26 bars. All right, that's going to either be cloud span A or cloud span B, depending on where you're at. Cloud span B is the midpoint of the high and the low of the last 52 sessions shifted. So here's how that works. We're going to take the turning line. We're going to count back 52 bars. We're going to take the midpoint, and we're going to take that midpoint and shift it into the future 26 bars, that's going to give you cloud span V. Last thing that we need to figure out how it's calculated is that crazy little lagging line. Lagging line, also known as the confirmation line, is the price line close shifted, so it's the present shifted back 26 bars. So it's this little blue line, and in some charts, it's, it's a white line, depending on what chart I'm looking at. So here's how this works. So we're going to take today's price action, we're going to shift it back into the past, 26 bars, that's going to be the lagging line or the confirmation line. All right. Okay. Ichimoku cloud, Ichimoku cloud chart signals. Uh huh. The fall on toss, correct? Lagging line crossing the cloud is the strongest and slowest signal. It's also the most important one, but it is very slow. So we're going to use a little cheat method here. The Goldilocks trade is the price line crossing the cloud. It is the second strongest. The price line crossing the lagging line or touching the cloud is a good signal. Uh, the cloud spans crossing is also a decent signal. And the turning line crossing the standard line or crisscross trade. So let's take a look at some of these. So by far, the strongest signal is when this blue line jumps above or below the cloud. So in this old chart of Apple, you can see this is when Apple used to be back in the heyday and it was making a massive uptrend. And then this blue line crossed the cloud, that lagging line. So you would short it there and then you would cover it once the blue line got back above the cloud. Now, if you remember from your definition, that lagging line is 26 bars shifted back left. So you wouldn't be short until about right here, which is not terrible, but it's not great. You're still leaving a little, you're leaving a little bit too much on the table. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a different filter. And what we're going to say is when the price action closes either above or below the cloud by one, two, or three bars. So if you get three closes below the cloud, you're going to short that and you're going to stay short until you get one, two, or three bars above the cloud. So in this example, we'd be short there and then we'd cover there. Does that make sense? That is the number one signal, in my opinion, that you should first learn how to use when you're using Ichimoku Cloud. There's several others, but that's the first one you want to start with because it's crystal clear in its interpretation. All right. So you can also see here in Apple, we had a massive uptrend. And then when the price action went below uh, the cloud, now we've got a massive downtrend. And then it in this example, it looks like it's about to shift for us, right? So yes, you in this example, you would still be short until you had one two or three bars above that cloud. You didn't, you most definitely would in that example. And I'm going to do a bunch of live charts here in just a minute because the PowerPoint is powerful. It is, you know, it, it's, it's got its limited uses. So we're going to scan the markets for some really good trades here in a minute. Now there's also uh, a, a faster, but uh, less effective trade where you're looking for when the red and the green cross, when the turning line and the standard line cross, wait until the price action is below the cloud 
and then use the Chris and then the cross to get short or wait until the price action is above the cloud and then do the Chris and then the cross to the high side. So it's just a crisscross trade. All right. All right. Bullish signals. Price above the cloud is bullish. Prices in the cloud are bullish if they came from the bullish side. The lagging line crossing the cloud is the main signal of trend change. Price crossing the cloud is a earlier but less reliable warning of trend change. And then you've also got the price and the lagging line will often find support at the cloud's edges. Cloud span A or cloud spans crossing may be a sign that the trend is changing. Be on the lookout for thick clouds after a run up, which could mean a trend change is about to happen. All right. All right. That's the bullish signals. Let's take a look at some bearish signals. You can read. I shouldn't have to read this to you. So I'm going to grab a quick drink of water while you read these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bullet points, and then we'll scan the markets for some trades here. All right. Okay, so that's the bearish signals. All right, following, we've already talked about the back testing. We talked about how successful it was. Um, time frame selection, very important. We're going to be looking at daily, but I use a daily, hourly, and 10 minute, but I'm going to use daily in this example. Uh, multiple time frame analysis is very important. My favorite is daily, hourly, and 10 minute. And then one of the things that I get asked all the times is what's the best stop to use? If you suck at stop management, what you want to use is use a parabolic SAR. And if you're long, you're going to use the bottom of the cloud. If you're short, you can use the top of the cloud. But a parabolic SAR will work wonders. It is one of the best trade management things to look at when you're looking at stop losses. So let's take a look here at some live charts. This is a live chart. I'm going to go at ES. I'm going to look at the markets really quickly. In this example, let me just go cloud because i got a couple other things happening on that chart. All right, let's just go at ES. Ching. In this example, are we bullish or bearish on the S&P 500? Just based on what you just learned in this presentation. Yeah, we're bullish, right? It's above the cloud and it's going higher and the turning line is doing its job and holding it. So we should be bullish in nature. Now, we do have some overhead resistance we're going to have to deal with here on the S&P, right? But there's some overhead resistance and it ran right into it. If it clears that, then it's probably going to go to the area of 2008. All right. Let's take a look at at YM. I'm going to do a look at the broad indexes All right, on the Dow. Long, when we had one, two, or three closes above the cloud, the lagging or confirmation line looks good. So we should be buying long on the Dow every time it pulls back to that yellow line. Does that make sense? Also, look at here, past, present, and the future saying, hey, we're going to go higher. It looks like it's going to go higher. If the yellow doesn't hold, I'm going to go to the purple, and then I'm going to go to the cloud. But for right now, the Dow looks pretty good. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ, oh, look here. So NASDAQ, you've got a half a dozen bars above the cloud, and you've got the lagging line or the confirmation line crossing above. That's good. It's probably going to go higher. What makes the confirmation line look good above or below the cloud will make it look good. So NASDAQ looks higher and you should be buying pullbacks and or breakouts. Let's take a look at the Russell TF. Russell is a good little trade here. It's above the cloud. Lagging line is following. Looks good. Let's take a look at the 30 year bond. 30 year bond. Okay. On the 30 year bond, it's in the cloud. So I would wait until it got back above the cloud to get long if I could. The 10 year note is in the cloud. I'd wait until it got above the cloud to get long on that. Let's take a look at gold. Gold, what are we looking at here? I got a lot of little lines here because I'm actually in some gold. So gold broke below the yellow and the purple. So I would like to be a buyer on gold if it would come down here and touch this cloud and bounce off of it. Does that make sense? Let's take a look at crude oil at CL. Crude oil right now, you've got more than a half a dozen closes above the cloud, but you see how the lagging line is not on the upside of the cloud. So we call this a lagging line hook. Sometimes it can be a head fake. So we've got price action above the cloud and we went below the yellow, which means we're going to go to the purple next and the lagging line's going, hey, be careful here. This is not a perfect trade, right? Now you're probably saying, well, does it work on both up and down moves? Yeah, yeah. Look how it did it in crude. 
it caught all of this massive move in crude when here i'll, I'll just make a longer time frame so it condensed time there was the short and on the weekly it's still not a buy okay but if we're looking at daily um if we go to a daily it is a sell there it was a sell there right here it's a buy the lagging line is not confirmed but it's okay spx i'll look at those that stuff in a minute coca-cola here's coke Coca-Cola looks good. It's going to go higher. Stop would be four forty-five eighty-seven. Target would be forty-eight bucks. You know, GE also having a pretty good day. GE is above the cloud. Target thirty-four. Stop thirty-one oh oh six. Now, what I do in TradeStation, you can do this in TradeStation and or Thinkorswim. You see this little price action thing here? I can just go price location, click click, click click, and what it'll do is it'll change. It'll say new below in the cloud, new below. New above, new above, new above, new below. That's pretty cool. And then I can actually filter out some of the stuff that I want to look at. Now, if you can't do that, there's a trick that you can use. Just a little hack here. You can go to S-T-O-C-K-C-H-A-R-T-S, stockcharts.com. So you go to this wonderful website right here. You go to stockcharts.com, and you scroll down to the right. And on this little blue box that says additional tools, you're going to click on predefined scan results. Okay, that's going to pop this little box up. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go to past technical indicators. You're going to go to candlestick patterns. And then to the bottom here where it says Ichimoku patterns, you're going to go down here and goes entered the cloud, moved above the cloud, moved below the cloud. Entered is interesting, but what we're looking for is we're going to hold down the left, the, the control key and left click, moved above the cloud, moved below the cloud. So there's 206 that moved above the cloud today, and there's 102 that moved below the cloud. Now I've got my list. I'm going to sort this by volume, and I can now see. Now, you don't want to trade over the counter, but you could look at this like MetLife. New York Stock Exchange trades at $44, and it's got mm, pretty good volume. So let's click on this chart right here. And then we can configure this chart, and then we can go, I don't want any of this stuff. I just want to go Ichimoku full, and then none, and then I don't want any of these other inputs to destroy me. None, and then I want none. And then I just hit update. And now you can see that MET, MetLife, it was, it was in the cloud yesterday. Today it's above the cloud, so that's a brand new spanking long. Does that make sense? And that's going to give us a list of, look at all this stuff. This gave us a list of 260 potential trades. Now, they're not all going to be good, right? Because you don't want to be trading something that trades, you know, $2. Not a bad, not a good, a dollar thirty. You don't want to be trading something that trades, you know, two cents or anything like that. So what you'll do is you'll just go through these and find the good ones that are traded on a real exchange, not over the counter, like 29 cents. Don't do that garbage. And then you can just look at stuff like that. And then you can just like, you know, WAL, you can look at that. That's a bank. You can look at any of these down here and see if they look good to your eye. Now, that is on the long side. On the short side, you come over here and we filter this by volume. And we can say, okay, is there any good shorts here? Well, you're looking at anything that looks decent. It, oh, there's JBL. You probably heard of that one. $19. Let's go over here and put this in this chart. And see what it comes out for JBL. See if it's doing it right. JBL. So JBL was in the cloud, and then it went back below the cloud today, right? What do you use for your targets? I cover that in the course, but you always want to be risking a minimum of risking one to make three, four, or five minimum. So, uh, which one did you guys like to see more longs or more shorts off of this list? And I'll look at some of these for you real quick. First one, uh, what do you think about P? I can do live charts individually here in just a second if you guys want them. A mm, couple more longs. Okay. So let's take a look here. And there is, that's the NYSE, WAL. Let's take a look at WAL. It's the next one that caught my eye. WAL has a brand new breakaway gap to the high side above the cloud. Next target on this one's going to be $37. Okay, $37. Does that make sense? That's how you can filter. Even if you don't have great charts like TradeStation or Thinkorswim or Toss, you can use stockcharts.com in order to do some of the heavy lifting for you. All right. So let me get through the rest of this PowerPoint presentation before I run out of time here, and then I'll spend the last time answering all your questions and going through the potential stocks or symbols that you list for me. Sound fair? All right. 
All right, so we went through some live charts. Obviously, you can see this is a powerful methodology. Here are some success stories. The course was awesome. I've taken one bond trade and made over $900. Do you think I'm happy? I just entered the bond trade, shorted again, where I took profit earlier today after you made me greedy for possible further drops. I'm happy dancing. This is the first time I've had a successful trade during a course. I have the hardest head in the world. You couldn't have made it simpler, Mary. Uh, dude, thanks. You're likely the only reason I have kept at it with trading. And now that I'm profitable, which is cool, I can't thank you enough. It was really great, and I can't wait to attend your gold trading class. Thank you so much for all you do, Greg. Here's one from Ron. Webinar series was a great experience. Very informative and educational and lots of fun, but that's no surprise. All of your courses have been great learning opportunities and great values. So I'm asking you if you want to be one of our future your success stories, all right? I'd like to see real-time ET on a Forex pair, please. It sounds good, Sandy. Give me a second. So who is this for? If you are serious about making real money in the markets, if you are looking for a proven system, if you can follow a simple set of rules and directions, and if you understand that your success is actually tied to you taking action, I can show you the trades. I can do them with you. You physically have to do them on your own, though. All right. All right. Uh, could you show how you use the please charts on trade station? Yeah, I'll get that in a second, too. Who is this not for? If you are a holy grail seeker, if you think you're going to take $5,000 and turn it into $2.1 million by May, this course is not for you. This is not a business opportunity. This is not a get-rich-quick scheme. This is called trading. There is risk involved. It is real. If you suffer from hopium, if you suffer from guru itis, if you follow myself and 9,200 other gurus online and you're confused all the time, pick two or three, follow what they teach, and try to incorporate it into your trading plan and then focus on being a specialist first, and then you can dabble in other markets. If you can't make a decision, it's obviously not for you. Um, and if you like to make things more complicated for no good reason at all, please don't take this course. That's not what it's about. It's about making it simpler, easier to use. Three different types of people. There are those that make things happen. There are those that watch things happen. And there are people that ask what just happened. Hopefully, you're in the top two groups. All right. All right. Here's a fraction of what you'll learn in the number one best-selling Ichimoku course on the U.S. market. Seven proven setups, trading rules and indicator settings, a checklist with cheat sheets, with entries and exits, stop losses and targets, how to scan the markets with Ichimoku, how to filter out the best trades so that you never guess what to do next, and how to avoid the head fakes. That is what's in the course. That's a fraction of what you'll learn. All right. You have absolutely zero risk. It is a 100% satisfaction guaranteed, no questions asked. If you do not love it, I do not want your money. I don't need the karma, and life is too short. I'll just give your money back and send you on your way happy. All right. I always over deliver period. My goal is that you get 10 times the value that you invest in the course in your return minimum is what I like to see. All right. So if you're interested in taking the course, it is an on-demand course. As soon as you hit add the cart, it will be added to your cart and you can start viewing the videos. So here's what all it comes with. If you go to hubertcenters.com forward slash cloudy, you can also call this telephone number, area code 859 uh, nine, six, three, three, four, four, five. Uh, you're going to get Ichimoku cloud charting secrets, $197 value, how to use Ichimoku with candlesticks, $97. I'm going to give you four follow-up webinars and one day of live trading. We're going to meet for the next four weeks, one, one day a week and go over the markets and filter out these trades. All right. Okay. Let's see here. Since there's a money back guarantee, uh, why not offer a free trial period? Because if you don't risk something, you don't really have any skin in the game. And I think you should have to invest something in order to learn, to learn something. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can do that. You can either lose all your money learning how to trade by yourself, or you can learn from another skilled professional and he'll teach you what he's doing. So your special offer link, it will be for $97 on this webinar. You can go to hubertcenters.com forward slash cloudy. And it's area code 859-963-3445. It's for the first 50 people, all right? We sell them in lots of 50. So I'm going to exit out of here. 
usually don't have to sell this thing pretty hard. You either see the value in what I just shared with you, or you do not. It's that it's that pretty much clear cut. Can everybody see this up here? HubertCenters.com forward slash cloudy and area code 859-963-3445. I'm going to put both of these in your chat box. And then I'm going to spend a little bit of time doing like a little lightning round around here. 859-963-3445. There you go. It's in the chat box. Hit me with some symbols and I'll go with them really quick. All right. NZ, NZD, USD. Uh, that is a long, it's above the cloud. Looks like it's going to go to 72. UVXY, UV, UV what? UV, oh my gosh, XY is a short with a stop of 22.12 and a target of $10. AMZN. AMZN is a long, but the lagging line's not there yet. See, see, you got one day above, two days above. You need three if you can wait. And that lagging line is just a little bit slow to react. So it's an aggressive long with a stop of 570 and a target of 650. Uh, let's see, CMG. CMG is a short with a stop of 475 and a target of 400. WMT. WMT is a long with a stop of 67.88 and a target of $74. MSFT. MSFT is a long with a stop of 54.29 and a target of, hold on, I got to calculate this one real quick, uh, 56.64. Uh, USDCAD is a short with a stop of $1.31 even and a target of, hmm, doesn't have a lot of ways to go, hold on, 128, risk rewards upside down on that one, PKI, PKI, uh, it's a long, but it's not a perfect long, the lagging line is not above the cloud, so I would pass on that one, JMPR, Little Juniper Networks is a long, but I would wait until the lagging line got up there, so that would be a pass for me. TSLA, Tesla is a long with a stop of 203 and a target of 280. FSLR, FSLR is a long with a stop of 67.78 and a target of $80. YM, I already went over, but I'll do it again. YM is a long. It needs to chew through this overhead resistance. Next target on this is going to be 18000 JWM, JWN is, oh, there's a pretty little chart. Uh, it would be a long. It's a confirmation. You got at least three bars above the cloud. Lagging line is with you. Stop would be 54.43. Target would be in the area of 68 bucks. EBAY. It helps if you can type. EBAY, not T. Ebay is a short when it breaks back through $23. DIS, Disney, is it's in the cloud. I would leave it alone. It needs to either be above the cloud or below the cloud. Exxon Mobil is a long with a stop of $82.36 and a target of $90. The US, which is the ZB for you, will be a long as soon as it goes back above one sixty four six thirty seconds. FIVE. FIVE is along with a stop of $39.88 and a target of $45. WTI is it's in the cloud, so I would pass, I would wait to pass judgment. I would just wait on that one. Yep. You guys see how easy it is to look at charts and immediately go up, down, or sideways? If it's up, we're long. If it's down, we're short. And if it's sideways, we're just going to leave it alone. JP Morgan. JP Morgan is in the cloud. Leave it alone. It is a pass. It is a pass. Leave her alone. Uh, TLT, same things as bonds. TLT, TLT, 30. Uh, Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs is in the cloud. Therefore, you leave it alone until it either goes above or below that. Do you like FIB extensions as well as past highs for targets? Yes. I use FIB extensions on a lot of stuff. Yes. AMBA. AMBA is right now it's still a short. If it can get above 50, it would be a long, but right now it's just a short. AAL. You can just use this stuff that's built into the free version of stock chart.
chart chart. So you could use either your charting package or you can scan with stockcharts.com and still use it to find some really great trades. Uh, Caterpillar, CAT, yeah, MT4 has it, MT4 has it. I'm not here to sell you an indicator at all. I'm here to sell you and, and, and talk you into learning how to use said indicator better is what I'm doing. It's on almost every platform out there. I'm just going to show you like how I like to use it. So it is one of the best free indicators out there. You should always filter through that. Caterpillar, great looking long, stop of $74.99, target of about $85. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Gold at GC. Gold is a long. I would let it drop to about 1200 before I'd buy it. I've always liked the clouds. So glad I found you. Uh, Help me perfect my use. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Karen. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Glad you like it. Um, can you use it on Forex? It's, it, it works great on Forex, yes. It's, it, it's over the past. The numbers on Forex are really good. If you, on the presentation, the numbers on Forex is it's been profitable on 29 currencies over the past 10 years. So, yes, SBUX, a little Starbucks, SBUX. Starbucks is a, it's above the cloud and the lagging line just crossed over. Um, next target for Starbucks will be 6165. Uh, <laughs> uh, FTW. Yeah, th thanks, Eric. That's hilarious. That's funny. Um, all right. Last one before I go. Oh, Euro USD. Let's just go at EC. That's easier. Euro currency. That's a long with a stop of 112 and a target of 116. I'm out of time. I want to make sure that we keep this thing on time. Um, the link is hubertcenters.com forward slash cloudy. The telephone number is 859-963-3445. I know the other guys are going to share some really cool stuff with you. All right. Uh, the operators are standing by. If you're getting voicemail, just keep calling. I can hear the phone r ringing in the background that you guys call and order this course. Um, all you have to do is keep calling. They'll answer. They're on. I can see other, three other lines lit up right now. So, I'm going to turn it over to Jeanette and the rest of the team. Good luck. Hope it helps. And I'll see you on the next one.